Chow dear hearts. Well, it's filming Friday and um, thanks for coming back to the studio and um, hanging out with me today. Today we're going to film uh, part three of our collage series and we're going to be working on assemblage. And uh, if you were with us for the last video, then we certainly had fun with the word yummy, didn't we? Um, had a great time with that. I want to thank you all for your wonderful comments and uh, for your for your huge support. It was awesome. Um, so uh, if you're brand new, we want to thank you for your thumbs up, for your kind subscriptions. We want to thank you for your comments, your wonderful comments, your questions. I would try to answer every single one of them. We really appreciate that for all your shares. And um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, my name is Katarina Giglio. I am, most of my friends call me Kat, and I am a mixed media artist with, uh, represented by a studio in Fort Collins, Colorado. And if you are interested in viewing my work, you can go on my site. We'll have that on the screen. You can click the tab at the top that says 142 BIS Gallery. Um, you can even make a FaceTime appointment and see it up close and personal, and um, we have free shipping in the U.S. So. There you have it. And we're going to get started on assemblage right away. Okay, assemblage or assemblage, as some people like to call it, um, is a three dimensional kind of art. And it's about bringing different uh, things together, just like you would in a collage. So you're bringing just different kinds of things together. And so I have some show and tell for you today. This is um, a, an old um, assemblage that I created um, quite a while ago. It was uh, it was part of a show uh, for Dia de los Huertos in uh, New Mexico. And uh, it's a very personal shrine for me. It's about the death of the idea of a child. And um, the, uh, the collage, it's, a, it's mostly found objects, but there is collage on the sides, um, and then found objects at the top. And then the little bones are handmade of paper clay, and the little death mask is paper clay too. So it's one of my uh, very favorite uh, shrines. Uh, and then the second piece is a piece that I made um, for a show I did on the uh, letter, based on the letter in art. And um, it's, it is collaged on the front and then a found piece um, that holds it shut. And then on the inside, I was inspired by a postcard that um, was from Paris, France in about the 30s. And all it said on the inside of the postcard was, wish you were here. So that's the title of this. And then the story in my head that went on was this one person who was left behind and the two um, travelers in, in uh, France, in Paris. And then these chains are the chains that hold them together, the chains of love that tie them all together. And um, this is a transfer on cloth, and this is fabric, and then all of this has been treated, and, uh, and I rusted this piece here. So that piece, and then one more piece I wanted to share with you that I kept. And this is another personal shrine. I did this uh, really early on in my career, probably early 2000s. And um, I, um, I'd i love to teach you this sometimes because this is, um, it's rusted tin <coughs> and then the, um, the pearls are hand stitched on here. And then this little door opens and um, the image inside represents me and the little butterfly is, um, represents transformation, so my transformation into my art career. And uh, there's a pen nib to represent art and a little tiny piece of found lace. So I like having a niche, um, a receptacle, um, a little place to put special things. And that's important uh, for today because we're going to be doing that. Okay, last time in the video, I made I created two pieces of art, and I asked you for your interpretation of the stories of each piece, and I loved your interpretations. They were awesome. Uh, I wanted to just tell you what I was thinking about and why I created them. So this very first piece here, I was thinking about uh, when I saw the butterfly pieces just ripped and just shreds of it, 
I was thinking about our lives being torn apart by this pandemic and um, in the very, which is represented here, and then in the very last one about piecing our lives back together. I mean, obviously we've all lost things in this time. Certainly I've lost my livelihood, my class. Uh, we're not doing any shows this year. So, uh, so that's what's represented here. And then by the time I got to this piece, I was really feeling like everything was going to come together and like a, there was a sense of peacefulness and serenity that kind of enclosed me when I was making this. So knowing that it's all going to be well. Part of the issue with assemblage is that there are so many possibilities. I mean, I just showed you three pieces of work that I've done over the years and look how different and varied they are. So there are so many things that you can do. But today we're gonna to focus on collage and assemblage. So I wanted to choose something, and this is my job as uh, a teacher inspirer, is to find something that you can use easily that you know materials that you can find or readily available or I can offer to you on Amazon which all of our things today are golden paints gel matte medium and a small cradled board um, so this is what we're going to use um, as our substrate instead of using this side we're going to use this side and that's going to create our niche so I have um, a lot of different ideas this is my plan so I'll just go over that with you first um, is to glue the box to the center glue the cardboard on top with an image and there will be images here and here. Okay, that's where we're going with it. Um, so, uh, just so you have an understanding of what I'm planning, so it's like I don't spring it on you just right away. <laughs> so, that's what we're gonna do. And then I've narrowed down the choices because we could be here literally all day, but it took me a long time to narrow them down. Um, but we're going to need an image, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use this image um, with these papers which I really love the way they all look together because of course we want to um, put um, some writing here one if we want to collage this area too or if I wanted to use the uh, the plague doctor and uh, use the plague um, use the newspaper um, cuttings and I photocopied these so that they would be easy to use too. So we have to decide which one we're going to do. And so we have to make that decision. And then one of these fabrics, I love the black velvet. I'd like to see that on the back. That would really make it stand out, wouldn't it? Put this here and put the image here and then the words, that would be yummy. Or this piece, which I love this too. This could go on the background really easily too. Um, so we have to make those decisions right away. Okay, so I think I've decided on using the Plague Doctor because while I love this image, and this is a transfer on paper as well as this one, um, while I love this image, um, you know, we are in a plague. So how often do you get to use something so interesting as this? This one to me um, just seems like it's beseeching and a doctor to me seems hopeful. Uh, and this isn't a shrine uh, or an assemblage to COVID. It's in spite of it, it's about a celebration of life and overcoming. And so inside this little box, I intend to put you know, uh, the things that I find this year that will fit in here, that represent this year. So they might be uh, a newspaper clipping that I can roll and sit in here, a tiny heart-shaped um, pebble or a feather or some the things that come to me that are found objects that will be meaningful to me um, for, with this shrine. So we're gonna go with this guy and we're gonna have to glue down um, his image. And I've already cut a piece so you want a piece of cardboard. This is came off. This is recycled, of course. It came off some kind of box, um, and I simply cut it down. But I want to be able to see the fabric underneath. Now I think I'm not going to go with the black velvet because it's going to be difficult to glue that on, and I don't want to use E6000 on this. I want to just use gel matte medium, and so this is. 
uh, going to be much easier. Um, it's going to get a really good connection when I glue it down, so I'm going to go with this. So first of all, we're going to glue the image to the cardboard. All right, so all I did was I cut it down and I cut the corners at an angle so that it won't be quite so bulky in the back, right? So that's just going to make things a little bit easier to glue them down. So it'll be like this. Now, if you don't know how to do a transfer, and the reason I did a transfer of the image, which gave me this side instead, um, is because I want to move from one generation to another. So, you know, if you just take the newspaper and you just print that and put it on your assemblage, that's fine. But this is a second generation now. It's a little bit different. It moves away from the original and it just becomes more your own piece. So I'm going to glue this in and get it all done and we'll be right back. Okay, so it's completely wrapped and I glued the back so that all of the edges will stay wrapped and down because you don't want anything to lift. One of the worst things that can happen if you're a mixed media artist is to have a piece of art to start lifting off. Um, and so I always make sure everything is really sealed really well if it's something for myself or if I'm going to sell it, obviously. Um, so I've got the top glued down. So we've got that part all ready. And then that will go on the box. The box will get glued in too, but we have to do the background now. Okay, I think this is gonna look really cool. We're gonna glue the box. Well, actually, we're gonna glue this to a piece of board. It's mixed media paper that I've cut to size. It just stuck in there. And then, of course, the box will go in here. And it's gonna come up a little higher because, you know, the box will be, will bring it up. So there'll be more dimension to it. And then, uh, and then I did not seal this with uh, gel medium. So this is just a raw um, transfer so that I can use colored pencil or go back in with paint or do whatever I want to to this image. So I think that's gonna be really cool. But right now we're gonna cut this down to size and then put it around the fabric. Right. I have this piece of lace. Actually, this is an old mantilla. If, um, if I don't, you know, I, I grew up, uh, I was reared uh, Roman Catholic. So this is an old mantilla. We used to have to wear these uh, chapel veils and, and uh, lace coverings on our heads. So I thought this would be really cool uh, to use for this um, as the background. And um, so I'm just gonna glue the edges in and then we're gonna glue it right into our substrate. Okay, I've glued the lace down. Now, if you decide that you want to recreate something like this, if you're using a bulky fabric, you're going to have to really pay attention to the back because if it's too thick, then it'll stand up too far and might not adhere as well. By the way, I meant to tell you that I did prime this before we started. I used a uh, clear gesso on the sides, on this, on the inside, and on the back so that everything would stick to it. And so I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to set it aside. And then I'm mixing paint because I thought I would like to use, um, you know, it's going to be a lot of black and uh, and gray and white. And so I thought it would be great to do red on the edges, which will give us just a little pop of color. And I want it to be more like a blood color. I don't want it to be fire engine red, so I'm using Pyrol and um, I'm using um, burnt sienna, both golden. And so I want it to be just a little bit, let's see, more like that color. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we're gonna paint it. Okay, so I'm almost finished painting this kind of a blood red color. I just want to give you a little tip that if you're going to come up to the edge, come up just slightly over the edge, we're planning on putting um, some kind of collage material on here. And so um, we just, we don't want it to show. We don't want to have to collage over. We want to just come right up to the top. So just paint it right to the edge and just kind of on top of the edge. I hope you can see that just with my brush slightly like this. Should be a good finishing touch. Okay, I'm gonna paint the outside edge. I may collage 
this part too. I don't know yet. But I know that if I don't paint it, I don't think I want to live with the white. I think I want to have it red, white, and black. I think that's going to be a really powerful uh, color story. So if I don't collage it, then I think the black will be great. Now, it would be a lot harder if I collage this and then I go back and do that. So assemblage takes a lot of planning and forethought. Um, you have to really think about it because if you get the piece done and then you say, oh, gold stars would look great here and here, and it's too late to be able to do that. So whenever I create an assemblage, I usually draw out exactly what I'm doing so that I have all the steps in mind. Otherwise, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't turn out as well as, as if you planned it. Alrighty, we're waiting for the black edge to dry and while we're waiting for that we're going to glue in the lace piece. So I have uh, gel medium on the back of our lace and I have gel medium on the inside of the cradle board. I want to make sure it's going to get a really good connection because when you lift that box up you don't want the whole back to come off, right? So I'm going to make sure that there's plenty of gel medium on here. I want this to live for quite a while. This is going to tell a story about this whole year for what we've been through. Um, and. Uh, And by the way, if you're new to our channel, you probably don't know that the person behind the camera is my wonderful husband. And um, he has been editing and shooting our videos and uploading them to YouTube. And I have to tell you that seriously, this channel would never happen if it wasn't for him. Because I don't do any of those things. I only make art. So you can all thank him in the comments today. Thank you, honey. <laughs> okay, I just glued the box down. I put gel matte medium on the box and on the substrate, which is the lace glued to mixed media paper cut to fit inside here. And so now our little top can just go on. So that looks just pretty yummy, don't you think? I said the yummy word. Um, and now we're going to collage this area here. And I decided I wanted to add some tissue paper and possibly even this. I love this. I, this is all I have left of this and it's just really fun. Um, so we're going to um, just play with collage and we're going to cut some pieces out of our photocopies, death toll, things like that, and uh, work around the edge. Okay, my original intention was to use the newspaper with uh, information like this, but as I'm making it, it just doesn't, it doesn't uh, resonate with me. So we pitched that aside, and like I said, you know, we're always making real art here. We're not just, we're winging it. We, I don't know how it's all going to come out, but I do know that I want something that's more subtle um, and something that, you know, we can't, we don't know what this says. I don't know. Something Medici. It's uh, definitely Italian, I think. Um, so we're going to play with that and we're going to work on um, getting a few of these pieces on. I have this almost completely collaged and now I just have to wait for it to dry. Now I tried this tissue paper, but it, was, it just seemed too busy and uh, that's fine. So we didn't use that, but I took the rest of the writing um, from the original photocopy that I made and uh, just added it to the edge and then used the rest of that tissue paper. Now I'm going to let it completely dry. Okay, so it's pretty close to dry. This works perfectly. I just love that. I might even cover the back of this at one point, but right now it's good. Um, so I am going to sand this off so that it has a nice finished edge. And um, And 
anything that comes off, I can always just patch back on there. Now what I think I'm going to do is create a glaze and go over this so that it's not as busy and it looks more cohesive. So I want to just kind of pull it all together. Now if I were going to do more sanding than this, I would wear a mask. Okay, I have it sanded and um, it still seems really busy to me. So uh, I'm thinking I'm going to definitely put a little bit of a black glaze over this, which is going to give it a nice finished edge. So we're going to mix up some satin glazing liquid with my black paint and then edge this out. Okay, so I just mixed <clears throat> carbon black with the uh, glazing, satin glazing liquid. And that's just going to kind of unify all the different writing. You're still going to be able to see that it's writing on there, but it's not going to be quite as distracting because really we want our focal image to really show up. And um, so this is going to, I think, pull it all together. Okay, so I'm just waiting for the glazing um, liquid to uh, and the black um, paint to dry. I really like the way it came out. I might even make it just a touch darker um, just to, I like, I like what's going on, but I, you know, this is our focal image, so we don't want to lose track of it's the doctor, right? So um, I found this little shred of, uh, of ribbon and, um, and I thought I would just kind of cut it and give him like a little corsage just kind of soften the scariness of him. Um, so, and I might even stitch a couple of, uh, or glue a couple of little beads on there um, for him. But I hope you can see that. And uh, I really like the way he's turned out. And then of course the top just lifts right off and I can just put all kinds of wonderful little yummy bits in there, right? So. Um, so he's almost finished. He's pretty close to being done, uh, but I'm really happy with the way he's turned out. Yeah. Well, we're almost at towel for now, and I really enjoyed doing this series with you, and I hope you enjoyed this. You can create anything you want to. It doesn't have to be a plague doctor um, to a year of hopefulness and knowing that everyone is healed. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, the way I'm going to finish this so that I can hang it is I am going to uh, use triangle um, hangers and uh, I'm going to use E6000 to glue it to the back and then wire it so that it would be appropriate for any kind of uh, hanging. So until next time, and next time we get together, uh, we're going to be making uh, miniature French journals. I'm very excited out of Cadi paper. So I know you're gonna have fun with me then too. But until then, ciao for now.